So as part of the prep and marketing for Sofa's big launch, uh, Sofa 3.4, one of the things I used was a press kit. And in this video, I wanna talk about what a press kit is, why I think it's valuable, and how I have mine set up for Sofa. Before we get into the actual press kit, I should probably explain what a press kit is for those of you who don't know. And I thought it might be fun to, uh, let's have chat GPT tell us what a press kit is. If you don't know what chat GPT is, uh, just Google it. It is, it is pretty uh, incredible so far. But yes, you can read this, uh, what's happening here. And yes, this is what a press kit is. The gist is a press kit is a tool with information and assets about your product, your company. And it's mainly used by people in the press to write coverage about you. And it's very simple, very simple idea. Uh, there's a lot of examples out there and uh, a lot of ways to build these things too, a lot of different tools. This is Sofa's press kit, and I use Notion for this. The reason I like to use Notion for, for something like this is, number one, it's extremely easy to edit and extremely easy to share with someone, right? Like you, you can make public links in Notion. I'll, I'll show you that once we get into it. I actually think that uh, Notion sites, look they look nice to me. Uh, and you can you can customize these in a lot of different ways, but this is a very very simple example. Uh, but Notion also makes it really easy to, to add assets to this, so images and even video and stuff like that. So you'll see one of the reasons I, I really like using uh, Notion for this as we go through this content here. And the way you can get to this to make it really easy for people to find, uh, what's very common is for that to be in the footer of your website. If you don't have a website for your your app or your product. Uh, you should have one, even if it's a very simple landing page. Uh, but this is a, you know, a very natural spot for this to live. You can just have a link to this press kit, and this essentially just links to that Notion page that I just showed. The reason why I have a press kit for Sofa is I want to make it as easy as possible for anyone in the press, in the media, to find out information about Sofa and to potentially cover Sofa. You know, you spend a lot of time on making an app and making a product. You know, this last release that I just put out, 3.4, I've been working on it for six months and I put a lot of time and energy into that. And I want people to <laughs> cover this. I want people in the press to see it, which means more people see it, hopefully more customers and, and users of the product. And to me, a putting together a press kit is a, a very simple thing to do. And if it helps anyone in the press to be able to write coverage a lot easier to add screenshots to their blog posts, whatever that may be. Um, I'm happy to do that because it just, to me, it increases the chances of, uh, of the app getting covered in some way. It's, it's not a guarantee that it's going to happen, but I think it really does increase the chances of it. So we're looking at the publicly shared link for the press kit that's put together in Notion, but if I actually flip over to Notion itself, so now I'm actually in the Notion app, so this is where I can I can edit things and, and do whatever I need. Once you have everything put together in here, and this is a very, very simple, you know, it's basically just like editing a document. If you go up to share any page in Notion, you can share it to the web, and I just toggle that on copy this web link, and then that's the link I use in the footer. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna just stick to the website here. So at first, it's just really simple information, right? Like, who's the press contact? I'm a one company person, so it's just me. Uh, and you can have, there's the email to actually contact me. Uh, and then just some quick links. So a link to the Sofa website, to the App Store page, to uh, social media accounts, and to the YouTube channel. People in the press may be looking for very quick ways to see more information about stuff, uh, whether that is the App Store or social accounts, whatever. And again, making that stuff very easy to get to, that is just a good thing. And then the next two parts are the review guides and the main content. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna look at these last. Let's actually look at the content piece. So first is uh, app screenshots. And what I do is I have these split up by iPhone and iPad. What I first have is the screenshots that you see in the app store. I've seen people write coverage and they use these images. So it's kind of like, yeah, why not have this stuff in here? And this is all very easy to download for for people if they wanna use it. And then I have screenshots of the app, just regular screenshots like this. If say the person doesn't want to take their own screenshots or they just wanna use these, that's that's completely fine. And then I also include them in a device as well. So if they wanna 
use them within a device, they can do that. And then I do the same thing for the iPad. So you can see iPad screenshots also in devices. I have the App Store versions of that and just the plain screen sh screenshots without a device. This is very easy to put together and extremely easy to update. So this is something where whenever I have new screenshots or new images or maybe new features, I will update that stuff here. So. Uh, again, very, very easy to do. So for the lifestyle images and graphics, this is where I will include the uh, app icon uh, and I'll include it with the uh, rounded corners so it looks like an actual app icon or without rounded corners, however they wanna use it. And then over a few releases, um, I've been creating more what you would consider lifestyle images. I just add them here. So just to give people variations on the types of images that they can use to uh, to feature sofa. And some of these are like photographs that I've actually taken so that, you know, there's some options for people with, with what they want to show. Or there's some kind of rendered ones in Photoshop if, uh, if people are going for a specific look. Uh, but again, making this really easy for someone who's maybe writing an article, uh, maybe they have a deadline and they just need a good looking hero image for whatever article they're writing, they can come here and, and get, you know, at least one good looking image. The last thing is logos. This is pretty simple. The press may want to use your logo for different reasons. Uh, so I have the prim primary logo as a PNG or an SVG and then reversed out. Again, just giving options and thinking through the various ways that this kind of stuff could be used within uh, a blog post, within maybe someone is going to cover you on YouTube and they want to use your assets in different ways. Um, just giving, giving some options there. So that's the content piece. And the next thing is review guides. So I have these set up in a couple different ways. So first is just the general sofa review guide. Basically what this does is this gives the kind of initial requirements, again, links to the website in the app store. It doesn't hurt to put those in multiple places. And then this is broken down by just starting to explain what the product is and hit on the main features here. So that let's say someone didn't look at the website for whatever reason, or didn't look at the app store page, they could use this page to get a gist for what the app is. I have some quotes from uh, from other press that Sofa has gotten, so people could see that. And then just some general FAQs that are uh, frequently asked questions. The thing I've been doing since Sofa 3.0 is I will write a specific review guide for a specific release. So you have the main sofa review guide and that's kind of the, the more evergreen one. And then what I do is for these various reviews, uh, or various versions, I will write specific review guides highlighting those specific features within there. So if I look at from 3.0 when this is released in 2021, so I'll put something at the top saying, hey, if you have any questions, reach out to me. And then I break this down into you know, a TLDR at the top, just if someone just wants the gist of this stuff, what's new, what do I need to know? They can see it and then direct links to the full review guide if they just wanna get screenshots or uh, any of those lifestyle images. Then I hit on specific features of the stuff. Uh, so for like Sofa 3.0, I was kind of documenting that stuff as things were going and creating videos on YouTube. So what was really nice about that is I was able to just add those videos within here. If someone wanted to learn about a specific feature like sticky notes or you know the improvements to activity, they could just watch those videos and learn about that stuff. So this is where using the videos and, and Notion specifically is really great. It just kind of, you can kind of throw anything in here and it just, just presents it really nicely. Um, I mean, you can even put tweets in here and stuff. So for 3.0, this was really nice to be able to do something like this. Now for the latest version, again, this is a very, very similar outline. One of the things I started putting in this top banner is, you know, still the same information, but also the release date is coming up because I'm contacting the press before the release date, right? Usually multiple weeks before then to get people enough time. Once I know what the release date is, I will actually put that in here. Uh, they can plan accordingly if they are going to write any coverage. And then I'll put, hey, just please wait until that date, right? So uh, this is traditionally known as like an embargo time or embargo date where you know you don't want anyone to publish something before a certain time on a certain date. So I'll put any kind of guidance in here if that's if that's necessary. Usually I just I don't care about a specific time, it's usually just a date. But anyway, and then this one I was also running a public beta, so it was a link to the beta if, if they wanted to download it to see that stuff. And then again, uh 
you know, I'll, I'll add images in here for the new features so they can see that stuff. Um, I had the TLDR so you can, again, get very quickly what is actually in this thing. Um, any kind of requirements for this for various versions. Uh, there are some features that do require iOS 16, so it's important to highlight that stuff. Again, links to these. So uh, the main review guide, app store screen or app screenshots, that kind of thing. And I did have a uh, like a launch video that I I put on here so people could could see the details of everything before beforehand. And again, just kind of highlighting specific features. And then what was cool about this is I actually linked to documentation that I have put together for how, you know, for shared lists. Like I had written documentation for, you know, how to unshare a list, how do you leave a shared list, how do permissions work, that kind of stuff. You know, some sometimes features are a little more complicated and re require a little more explanation. So um, having the, the support docs was also super helpful. So that is how and why I use a press kit and uh, how I put it together in Notion. And I really think, especially if you're an indie developer, Having something like this really doesn't take too much time to put together, and it only helps uh, to get coverage. It, it really doesn't hurt at all. It's only going to make that process a lot easier for yourself uh, and for whoever's going to cover all the hard work that you did. So if you're interested in seeing Sofa, the app that I work on, uh, you can head to the App Store and download that. It's an app that helps you be more intentional with your downtime. So you can create a list of books, movies, TV shows, video games, all types of stuff. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. Bye.